episode 44. Harry, Ron, and Hermione returned to the castle at the end of the lesson in high spirits. Seeing Hagrid put down Malfoy was particularly satisfying, especially because Malfoy had done his very best to get Hagrid sacked the previous year. When they arrived in the entrance hall, they found themselves unable to proceed owing to the large crowd of students congregated there, all milling around a large sign which had been erected at the foot of the marble staircase. Ron, the tallest of the three, stood on tiptoe to see over the heads in front of them and read the sign aloud to the other two. Tar Wizarding Tournament. The delegations from Beaubatons and Durmstrang will be arriving at 6 o'clock on Friday, 30th of October. Lessons will end half an hour early. Brilliant, said Harry. It's potions last thing on Friday. Snape won't have time to poison us at all. Students will return their bags and books to their dormitories and assemble in front of the castle to greet our guests before the welcoming feast. Only a week away, said Ernie McMillan of Hufflepuff, emerging from the crowd, his eyes gleaming. I wonder if Cedric knows. I think I'll go and tell him. Cedric, said Ron blankly as Ernie hurried off. Diggory, said Harry. He must be entering the tournament. That idiot Hogwarts champion, said Ron as they pushed their way through the chattering crowd toward the staircase. He's not an idiot. You just don't like him because he beat Gryffindor at Quidditch, said Hermione. I've heard he's a really good student. And he's a prefect. She spoke as though this settled the matter. You only like him because he's handsome, said Ron scathingly. Excuse me, I don't like people just because they're handsome, said Hermione indignantly. Ron gave a loud, false cough, which sounded oddly like, Oh, heart! The appearance of the sign in the entrance hall had a marked effect upon the inhabitants of the castle. During the following week, there seemed to be only one topic of conversation, no matter where Harry went, the Triwizard Tournament. Rumors were flying from student to student like highly contagious germs. Who was going to try for Hogwarts champion? What the tournament would involve? How the students from Beaubatons and Durmstrang differed from themselves? Harry noticed, too, that the castle seemed to be undergoing an extra thorough cleaning. Several grimy portraits had been scrubbed, much to the displeasure of their subjects, who sat huddled in their frames, muttering darkly and wincing as they felt their raw pink faces. The suits of armor were suddenly gleaming and moving without squeaking. And Argus Filch, the caretaker, was behaving so ferociously to any student who forgot to wipe their shoes that he terrified a pair of first-year girls into hysterics. Other members of the staff seemed oddly tense, too. Longbottom! Kindly do not reveal that you can't even perform a simple switching spell in front of anyone from Durmstrang, Professor McGonagall barked at the end of one particularly difficult lesson, during which Neville had accidentally transplanted his own ears onto a cactus. When they went down to breakfast on the morning of the 30th of October, they found that the great hall had been decorated overnight. Enormous silk banners hung from the walls, each of them representing a Hogwarts house. Red with a gold lion for Gryffindor. Blue with a bronze eagle for Ravenclaw. Yellow with a black badger for Hufflepuff. And green with a silver serpent for Slytherin. Behind the teacher's table, the largest banner of all bore the Hogwarts coat of arms, Lion, eagle, badger, and snake united around a large letter H. Harry, Ron, and Hermione spotted Fred and George at the Gryffindor table. Once again, and most unusually, they were sitting apart from everyone else and conversing in low tones. Ron led the way over to them. It's a bummer, all right, George was saying gloomily to Fred. But if he won't talk to us in person, we'll have to send him the letter after all. 
or we'll stuff it into his hand. He can't avoid us forever. Who's avoiding you? said Ron, sitting down next to them. Wish you would, said Fred, looking irritated at the interruption. What's a bummer? Ron asked George. Having a nosy git like you for a brother, said George. You two got any ideas on the Triwizard Tournament yet? Harry asked. Thought any more about trying to enter? I asked McGonagall how the champions are chosen, but she wasn't telling, said George bitterly. She just told me to shut up and get on with my transfiguring my raccoon. Wonder what the tasks are going to be, said Ron thoughtfully. You know, I bet we could do them, Harry. We've done dangerous stuff before. Not in front of a panel of judges, you haven't, said Fred. McGonagall says the champions get awarded points according to how well they've done the tasks. Who are the judges? Harry asked. Well, the heads of the participating schools are always on the panel, said Hermione, and everyone looked around at her rather surprised, because all three of them were injured during the tournament of 1792 when a cockatrice the champions were supposed to be catching went on the rampage. She noticed them all looking at her and said with her usual air of impatience that nobody else had read all the books she had. It's all in Hogwarts A History, though, of course, that book's not entirely reliable. A revised history of Hogwarts would be a more accurate title. Or a highly biased and selective history of Hogwarts, which glosses over the nastier aspects of the school. What are you on about, said Ron, though Harry thought he knew what was coming. House elves! said Hermione loudly, and proving Harry right. Not once in over a thousand pages does Hogwarts a history mention that we are all colluding in the oppression of a hundred slaves. Harry shook his head and applied himself to his scrambled eggs. His and Ron's lack of enthusiasm had done nothing whatsoever to curb Hermione's determination to pursue justice for house elves. True, both of them had paid two sickles for a spew badge, but they had only done it to keep her quiet. Their sickles had been wasted, however. If anything, they seemed to have made Hermione more vociferous. She had been badgering Harry and Ron ever since, firstly to wear the badges, then to persuade others to do the same. And she had also taken to rattling around the Gryffindor common room every evening, cornering people and shaking their collecting tin under their noses. You do realize that your sheets are changed, your fires lit, your classrooms cleaned, and your food cooked by a group of magical creatures who are unpaid and enslaved, she kept saying fiercely. Some people, like Neville, had paid up just to stop Hermione glowering at them. A few seemed mildly interested in what she had to say, but were reluctant to take a more active role in campaigning. Many regarded the whole thing as a joke. Ron now rolled his eyes at the ceiling, which was flooding them all in autumn sunlight, and Fred became extremely interested in his bacon. Both twins had refused to buy a spew badge. George, however, leant toward Hermione. Listen. Have you ever been down into the kitchen, Hermione? No, of course not, said Hermione curtly. I hardly think students are supposed to. Well, we have, said George, indicating Fred, loads of times to nick food. And we've met them, and they're happy. They think they've got the best job in the world. That's because they're uneducated and brainwashed, Hermione began hotly. But her next few words were drowned by the sudden whooshing noise from overhead, which announced the arrival of the post owls. Harry looked up at once and saw Hedwig soaring toward him. Hermione stopped talking abruptly. She and Ron watched Hedwig anxiously as she fluttered down onto Harry's shoulder, folded her wings, and held out her leg wearily. Harry pulled off Sirius's reply and offered Hedwig his bacon rinds, which she ate gratefully. Then, checking that Fred and George were safely immersed in further discussions about the Triwizard Tournament, Harry read out Sirius's letter in a whisper to Ron and Hermione. Nice try, Harry. I'm back in the country and well hidden. I want you to keep me posted on everything that's going on at Hogwarts. 
Don't use Hedwig. Keep changing owls. And don't worry about me. Just watch out for yourself. Don't forget what I said about your scar. Serious.